Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, I forgot to come up with a bit for this one ahead of time. It was Requiem for Methuselah. It was, it was okay. Yeah, it was fine. I don't know. It is okay. Um, I, think, I think our bit could be more <clears throat> it's the final countdown. Yeah, yeah, it's the final countdown. We are on the final five episodes of Star Trek, the original series. Today we're watching an episode called The Way to Eden. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get to post episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We're about to watch The Way to Eat It. Hey, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, sort of, uh, you know, nothing amazing, you know. Very few things, I think, in season three are, are just, like, you know, like, are gonna, like, reach some of the highs of one and two. No, um, I, th I think that's sort of just obvious. But I'll, but I'll take a solid episode when I get it, and, uh, and this was very solid. Um... First thing I actually want to bring up is just a stupid little statistic thing. I'm sure you saw me like looking in the back of my notes as we were watching it. I did. I keep going back. Uh, this is the second episode in all of season three to not feature Ahura. I mean, I knew she wasn't here in this episode, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, she wasn't in uh, The Empath. Oh. Yeah. So, but otherwise, yeah, she's appeared in almost every episode of season three, which I think is just a really cool statistic. That and just showing just how important Nishaw Nichols was to the show. Um, even if, you know, she doesn't regularly go on missions like Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, like, her is always there, um, which, mm -hmm. which I just I think is it's very important, very important to know. So, anyway, um, so this is about space hippies. Uh, this is really cool, actually. Um, misguided space hippies, yeah, I should say, or more so, their leader is misguided. Yeah, because the episode never really takes a stance against the hippies' ideals themselves. If anything, it sort of goes with the with it, at least tacitly, saying your your beliefs aren't harmful outside of what your leader did. Yeah, straight down to having Spock, one of our main characters, straight up say like, I respect, hell I side with, with your with your mission. I understand what you're what you're doing, what you're going through, and, and why you do this. And were I not here, I might be doing the same thing. Um, yeah. Because it's been established before that Spock doesn't even necessarily fit into Vulcan culture. Where would somebody like Spock fit in outside of Starfleet? Um, and something like this? Yeah, maybe. Totally yeah. possible. Yeah, I think that's really cool. It's a cool idea, um, especially for someone as as logical as Mr. Spock. Um, just a just a cool idea to bring up. So yeah. Um, this one starts off with a high speed chase. It's not funny to say. It starts off with a high speed chase. These guys have stolen this cruiser and they get taken aboard the Enterprise as the cruiser explodes. Um, and, uh, and we spend the rest of the episode just getting to know these guys, getting to know their culture. Um, I loved Adam in particular as a character. You know, not, not just because he has the most screen time, definitely. Because there are other characters to enjoy here. But um, He's got the most enjoyable personality. He does. He does. Um, and also just some really hilarious lip-syncing issues going on there. Which is funny, because I, I know on multiple occasions I've called out just how typically great the lip-syncing is in Star Trek TOS. Um... Not so much here. No. Not so he much is, here. however, he does appear to be, like, the most fervent believer mm -hmm. in this group. Yeah. Which is probably why he gets the fate he does. Mm -hmm. And I did appreciate his relationship with Spock throughout it. I thought, I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting. Spock was a big highlight of this one, obviously. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it started off as, like, a ploy, but not just a ploy. Like, they, they you know, they bond over music, you know. Like, like it was Spock, a genuine bond, yeah, too. Yeah, Spock, like, you know, has this, this whole idea that, that, you know, like, that, that he understands what they're going through and that um that he wished them all the best the final scene of the episode is literally him wishing them all the best still even after all the shit they do um i think that's really important and uh i don't know just really sad adam dies by the end he's just he's a great character i mean it's a um, bit you know sh uh, shoehorned in a little bit yeah well especially because this is also our second garden of eden allegory in uh in star trek with uh, previously being the apple this one does not have <laughs> paint racially offensive painted people, so there's that at least. It has that going for it. I do um, like the idea that the, a planet that's beautiful has no life on it outside of plant life mm -hmm. is because the plant life kills everything. Yeah, yeah. I would love to know how that happens. Mm -hmm. I think there's there could be an immensely interesting biological history there. Yeah. Also, once again, Star Trek makeup just doing a beautiful job showing the gruesomeness of diseases and how they affect the body like yeah ugh. actually oddly enough because i mentioned the empath earlier the empath, empath had those great effects when they showed like people like dying and everything that was, that was great um anyway uh fun things in this episode yes <laughs> fun things fun things 
I gotta talk about the Sulu moment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> George Takei has this beautiful moment when he's like being like sort of like hit on by this girl. And there. you can see him knowing he has this George great T- eyes. George Takei just has the biggest shitty thing grin on his face, just like is so excited to say what he's about to say. <laughs> Beautiful moment. Absolutely beautiful moment. Um, yeah, loved that. Uh, that was great. Um, again, I really did just love the scene with, when Spock was like bonding with, with the space hippies like through music. I thought, I thought it was really fun. Um, I love Chekhov in this. We don't we haven't had a lot of like big Chekhov moments in season three, but um, this is a great episode for him, I thought. Mm-hmm. It gave him a genuine love interest with like genuine chemistry. Yeah. Unlike a lot of... Kirk's love interest well, yeah, this season. It's funny because like as it progressed, I was like, oh, you know what? I actually buy this. This is pretty good. Um, I think because the bar had just been set so low by all the random women that Kirk has been hitting on for no reason that he barely knows in season three. Mm-hmm. Um, just having like a genuine romance here that actually works, and I totally buy because um, they they do a great job of like establishing this history between Chekhov and I can't remember the woman. The name of, I should have written it down. The woman that he was in love with. Uh, they, they have this history. They were in Starfleet together. They, they were in the Academy together. Um, and she went off and joined her space hippies. He went off and continued. To, he's on the Enterprise now. Um, and they found each other again. And so when they have those moments where they're reconnecting, I really bought those moments. Um, yeah, just really great stuff. Um, yeah, loved that moment. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, oh yeah, Romulan space. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Because what the hell? We've seen Romulans, seen, I should specify, seen Romulans exactly two times in this show, Balance of Terror and uh, the Enterprise incident. Yes. Um, but we talk about them all the time. Yeah. We have well-established Romulan space here, which I find really weird, considering like the whole thing in Balance of Terror was that they didn't know what the Romulans even looked like in Balance of Terror, right? Uh, yeah, if I recall, it's been a while, but if I recall, the whole idea was Romulan space was divided up that way before they had screen to screen so like everyone knew where the boundaries are but they didn't know what each other looked like mm-hmm. um yeah just because it's interesting thing like whenever like we constantly bring up that they're like they're all apparently they have a shit ton of space because they're always accidentally going into romulan space <laughs> that or their that or the enterprise is always in like a specific area of space maybe that's maybe that's it yeah like maybe the enterprise can is only in like a specific like area of the galaxy mm-hmm Cause I think that would make some sense. Yeah, yeah. Like if they don't leave some certain coordinates. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess that's what we have to add for the the way to Eden. Is that all right? Uh, uh, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, uh, a little disappointed in the lack of McCoy in this episode. Yeah, he had what? We're in two seasons. Yeah, we got four episodes left. I want as much divorce to Kelly as possible. I like just more, please. Um, I don't know. That, that, that's my only request for the final four episodes. <laughs> yeah, but. Still the final four. Final four. Here we are. So yeah, uh, be sure to join us next week when we continue Star Trek, the original series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.